A common misconception that I hear from patients and that I read online is this idea that a PGT normal embryo is perfect and it should be foolproof. This fallacy is exactly why it's such a devastating blow if you have a PGT normal embryo transfer that doesn't implant or worse results in an early miscarriage like a biochemical pregnancy loss. I know, I know, it was a good grade. You had a cavity assessment for your uterus and everything looked perfect. So you're thinking, if this embryo did not work, it means that there's something wrong with my body. It's my immune system, or maybe I have a blood clotting disorder. These are the common reactions that we hear and see all the time. I have a new splash. PGT normal does not mean perfect. This is what a blastocyst stage embryo on day five to day seven after fertilization looks like. It has 100 to 200 cells. They separate out into cells that become the placenta and cells that become the baby. And this allows us to biopsy a very small portion of the cells on the outer part of the embryo that would one day become the placenta and we send this off for genetic testing. This is important because genetic errors in embryos, which are most often derived from the egg, are the most common cause of why an embryo won't implant or could result in miscarriage. All right, so this brings us back to the original misconception, right? If PGT is able to do this and weed out the bad embryos, then why did my PGT normal embryo result in a live birth? Well, it comes down to the fact that there are limitations to what PGT can tell us, right? Going back to this diagram, you're sampling a very limited number of cells, and it's a very limited amount of DNA that we have to work with. So the resolution of how far in we can zoom in and count the amount of DNA in the embryo is very limited to 5 million base pairs of DNA. So if you have smaller sections of DNA that are missing or duplicated, and they happen to involve important key genes that are crucial for growth and development in the early embryo, that in and of itself could be a reason that the embryo, even though we thought it was normal, still was unable to persist. Also, in biology, we know that there can be mosaicism, where there's a mixture of cell types two different cell lines running through the embryo. And if we're only sampling a small proportion, it may not be representative of what actually made up the majority of the embryo. So those are two examples of the limitations of PGT. We also have to remember that PGT is just quantifying the amount of DNA, the amount of chromosomal content. All of us who have the normal number of chromosomes, 46, can still have our bodies break down in other ways. So there can be other things at the cellular level that are impacting embryo function. And this is why after doing a thorough investigation and ruling out other major issues like structural problems with the uterine cavity or things like a hydrosalpinx, we've left no stone unturned. Often the fertility doctor is gonna say, we think it's a matter of doing another transfer and trying with a different embryo because something may have just been really wrong with that embryo that PGT could not detect.